is this? I probably need to do this one. And uh, Happy Thursday, guys! Hey, everybody! Hey, 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 everybody! Hey, hey! Hey everybody! And I'm going to leave this one. Sorry y'all, I'm still working. I am good. I am actually um, finishing up the last um, touches and changing the last few details uh, for my book. I actually have a book that's coming out um, March 1st. So I've been working on that. <gasps> okay, that's the one. Yes, I have a parent book that's dropping March 1st. I'm very excited. Thank you guys. It. Yay! I know, right? I am so excited. Um, I did a workbook with my book, so I was just finishing up some of the different stuff in the workbook. Um, I'm trying to see if I can. Let me see. I'll share it with you guys. I ain't going to share it with everybody. But I tell y'all, I tell y'all. Mm. Supposed to be getting ready for the gym. I gotta go work out. What y'all doing? That's why I actually got on here to see how is everybody. I feel like I ain't seen nobody in forever. I did that. I get on here and start deleting. I got so much stuff in here. How was everybody uh Valentine's Day? What did y'all do Valentine's? Did everybody have fun? Enjoy themselves? Oh, I need to add that on there. Uh, I've been here. I be trying to get on live as much as I possibly can. What y'all got going on? How was everybody's Valentine's Day? What did you guys do? Trying to see. Oh. See, at least you, see, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get real nasty, nasty. Valentine's Day is when you pull out the, the real stuff. You pull out the, um, the fun. That's why I like Valentine's Yeah, you're supposed to have some fun on Valentine's. I'm ha I'm so happy that you guys enjoyed y'all Valentine's Day. I really didn't want nothing. I was just on here to see what y'all was doing. I've been um working. Oh, a heart 
high-shaped pizza? Where you was getting the high-shaped pizza from? I'm sorry, your car broke down, Pooh. Yeah, he and uh, Mrs. Peters cooking up like that. Oh. Ooh. I'm praying for you. Me and my daughter's just talking about that. Being pregnant. I'm praying for y'all because I'm out here uh, enjoying my best life. Uh, this is the first year that I didn't uh, buy anything for my kids. And they have been on my head. They was like, we don't get a Valentine's this year. I was like, no. Like y'all 24 and 25. I figured y'all didn't want me to buy y'all one. So, yeah. This is the first year. No, if your baby sleep, they sleep. You don't have to wake them up. Let that baby sleep, especially like at night if they're asleep. You can let them sleep through the night. Let them sleep those extra few hours. Um, but about five months, sleep training can actually start at nine, at nine to ten weeks. I talk about that in my book. But yeah, you don't have to wake them up. My daughter was like, why you not, um, why I didn't get a Valentine's gift, sweetheart? No, I, I literally just stopped last year. But I got my grandson something, but that's just, because I buy my son, his girlfriend stuff. Like, so for Valentine's, I normally make the kids something, and whoever they're dating at the time, I get them a gift too, so... I normally do very good with that. I'm that mom. Hey! I've been doing good. Yeah, I'm trying to get out of... Like, I don't think I'm going to do Easter baskets this year for them. I ain't told them yet, though. They, they, they going to... They little feelings going to be hurt, but they'll be all right. But other than that, I'm going to keep on going. I keep telling them they don't need all them stuff no more. They grown. They 25. You don't need me to still make you baskets and stuff. Oh, my daughter already fussed me out. My daughter was very upset with me. She was like, do I? She was like, where my Easter basket? I was like, you grown, baby. She was like, no, I still need an Easter basket. I don't get nothing for Valentine's. I'm not getting nothing from Easter. You just, ugh. You grown. Only thing that I uh, didn't do that I normally do is get something for my grandson. I didn't get some. I didn't get anything for my grandson, but I normally get him a gift and take it to school. I'll be studying now. I know. I ain't making no baskets. I'm tired of them. <laughs> but they know I've been working on my book, so they hadn't. They've been easy on me. They've been real easy. They was like, when you finish your book, I still want my Valentine's. So I'm very surprised my son ain't said nothing to me because that's normally who really be wanting they Valentine's stuff. Like last year, yeah, every year, whoever my kids date, I get the kids a gift. I get their spouse a gift. I'm that, I am definitely that mom. I miss doing that when they were in high school. I was that mama who would send stuff to the school so everybody has something every year. Now them folks grown. They'll be all right. That's why I stopped doing it. They grown. They, my son to be 25. They don't need no more Easter stuff. Ooh, you making me feel bad. They in their 30s. I... I probably could get them some uh stuff. But I they'll be all right. Oh yeah. The, a lot of times they don't let you do stuff like that when the kids got uh testing and stuff. They don't want any interruptions. But I'm their parent. I used to bring the kids wings or food. Anything they little hard desire. That's what I would bring them. Hey. I'm just sitting here chilling. See, I'm like, I don't, I don't, y'all gonna make me go to the store.
my son show was like uh hey because i ain't say come get your stuff <laughs> they'll be all right Mm -mm, I'm over it. I need to. Mm -mm. I ain't want nothing, y'all. I was trying to jump on here right quick to see what y'all was doing. But see, like, with the kids being older, I get, like, bubble bath stuff for their Valentine's, face masks, and pajama pants. That's it. I do have another email, but I ain't... Just because you act so nicely. Hey, pretty Tammy, DJ, pretty Tammy. Y'all, that's my favorite DJ. Uh, pretty Tammy the DJ. If y'all need a DJ in Atlanta, that's my favorite DJ. She is the best. She can rock a party like no other. That's my girl. That's my girl. So, I got two emails that I can read. One is real nasty. Well, it's not real nasty, but it's kind of nasty. And one of them got a lot of drama to it. Okay, it ain't going to take that long because I got to I gotta uh, go work out and I got to leave the house at 430. So, I ain't going to read the real long one. Let me see. No, that's not that email. What y'all say? Drama. <laughs> I knew y'all was going to want the drama one. Okay. Oh, this one real long. Oh. I ain't going to read them. That one too long. Okay. Oh, we can read this one. Okay, okay. Hey, 502 Mail. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Okay, we're going to read this one. It's a little drama, but it's not a lot. I mean... Okay. The subject says, two babies, one man. Dear Nanny Q, I've been dating two women for the last two years. I told both of them that I didn't want anything serious. They both were okay with it. Both of them have something special that I like. One loves to cook and I love to eat. The other one loves to party. We go out, we have so much fun. We can party to 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. She gets an hour of sleep and she's back into business mode. Both of them have very professional jobs. Neither one of them have kids. A few months ago, make sure we ain't got no kids on here because this is about to get real nasty. A few months ago, I told, let's call them A and B, just, just A and B. I told A that I wanted to have a threesome with B. She said she was down for it. I told B that I wanted to have a threesome with A. At first, she was hesitant, but she said she was okay with it. We had our first threesome two months ago. We've been having threesomes every weekend ever since then. I'm starting to feel like they are using me. At first, it was a turn on to watch both of them be together. But at this point, I can sit in the corner and they go at it with each other. I've noticed that they have a look of love in their eyes, something that I didn't notice before. They said that they don't know each other and they said they've never been together, but the body chemistry is crazy. Two weeks ago, A told me that she thinks she's pregnant. Yesterday, B texted me and told me she's six weeks pregnant. I don't know if I'm the father of either, but if so, I have two kids that are due within six weeks of each other. Am I wrong if I ask every if I ask both of them to move in with me so I can have both of my kids under one household? True, the benefit of having both of them there is we 
true the benefit of having each one of them there is the kids, but also I get to play with both of them at the same time. My friends told me that I'm setting myself up for disaster because it looks like they're into each other and they're using me. They say they don't know each other. However, they have so many things in common. Both of them go to the same nail salon. They both graduated from the same college. One just graduated a year before. They both have similar cars and they both love me. It's like I'm dating sisters, but they don't know they're sisters. I've met both of their families and they say that they don't know each other. My wife moved from a, a small town to Texas and after me and her broke up, that's when I met B. I've been knowing A for a while because she worked with me. My ex-wife would never allow me to have this kind of lifestyle and this is something that I always wanted. I feel very comfortable with A and B, but it's something in the pit of my stomach that's telling me that they're using me as a do boy. It's like they only wanted they only want me because they want kids. When I told them both that I didn't know if I want if I was ready to be a father, they both gave me the same answer. They both said and he got a screenshot right here. The screenshot from A. The screenshot from A says, "Hey, my period is late." I think I'm pregnant. If I am, I'm, I am going to keep it. It's okay if you decide you don't want to be a father. I've always wanted to be a mother. The screenshot from B says, hey, I just left the doctor. I'm six weeks pregnant. I know you said you didn't want anything serious, and I'm okay with that. I've always wanted kids. So I would not be terminating this pregnancy. If you stay around, that's okay. If you don't stay around, I'm okay with that too. I just wanted to inform you that you might have a child on the way. Nanny Q, how should I look at this? Both of them text me somewhat the same thing saying if I don't wanna be around, I would never be that kind of person that wouldn't wanna be in my kid's life. However, I feel like it was a setup because both of them understood that I didn't want kids or a girlfriend. Do you think I would be wrong if I asked both of them to move in with me so I can help take care of the kids? Or am I just trying to have my cake and eat it too? I think it was a setup too. So, I can't show y'all the screenshot, but on the screenshot, it's like somebody copied and pasted and just changed like a few words. Because at the end of both screenshots, it's the little heart emoji. It's three heart emojis. I think my boy got set up. I don't know what they did, but that text looked like a copy and paste. Like it's three hearts at the bottom of it. I mean, not like the little heart emoji thing. And it's the same way on A and B text. But he said when they be doing it, it's like their chemistry is good. I I I I I can't say I understand. I I don't know. But the only time your chemistry is good with somebody, they that's it. They was either friends or they been knowing each other. Cause the chemistry just to be that good, and then for them to go along with it so easily, because he said that he told A that he wanted to have a threesome, and she was okay with it. He told B that he wanted to have a threesome and she was okay with it. Nobody gave him any pushback or no, I ain't doing that. 
Now, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> they became friends real fucking fast. That's it. They became friends real fast. Ah, that's the thing. For both of them not to have no pushback and everybody's just like, oh, okay, we can do it. I mean, I ain't going to be mad about it. Because if somebody come to me and be like, yeah, you know, I no. I don't know. No. Nothing. Being greedy got him. And he talked and said that his ex-wife would never do that. So maybe because this girl was into it, he jumped on it. But like you said, he was being greedy. I just emailed him back and told him we were doing the story live on my, that I was getting ready to read this on my live. He hasn't emailed me back to say he's on here. So hopefully he'll catch it. If not, I'm going to put it on my uh, YouTube too. So he can see it on YouTube. But that's just, that's a coinky dinky. That's a real big coinky dinky. I am good. How are you? First of all, he trying to move both of them men to benefit him. But hey, beautiful. Um, I don't know. I am. It's different. I tell you that. Yeah, so it's a show that I was looking at. I don't know why I was looking at it. Um, when I'm working, I like to have stuff playing in the background. So I was just listening to it. It was some about poly relationships. And these folks was just talking about, you know, how they have certain nights that they get together and stuff like that. I was like, that's a lot. I have a hard time with just my husband to have two people. I wouldn't be able to do it. I'd be too tired. I'm tired now and I got to go work out. But yeah. Let me see what happened. Yeah, that's so both of them are pregnant and they're six weeks apart. That smells like a setup to me. It really does. I ain't even gonna lie. It sounds like a real good setup. He gonna have to be something. Now, I, I had a client many moons ago that had a wife and nobody knew she had a wife. Nobody knew she had a wife. She was dating this man. The man proposed to her and they went on an island and got married. And she hired her wife as her nanny. And the man never knew. He just thought that he had hit the jackpot because he was sleeping with his wife and the nanny. And the whole time there was a setup. They had set it up like that. So when the nanny got pregnant by the husband, um, they decided for everybody to stay in the same house. And I came in to nanny for the three-year-old and I was sitting there talking, let's say Rebecca. I was sitting there talking to Rebecca and um, Rebecca was telling me the backstory on how she really wasn't a nanny. She was actually married to, let's say, Melissa. She was actually married to Melissa. And in where they're from, they couldn't sh showcase their, you know, their marriage and stuff. So Melissa decided that she was going to be the one to have the husband. And yeah. Well, they had a... Allen wedding or something. I mean, she had pictures and everything. I ain't getting to nobody's business. I was just like, oh, okay. So the husband never found out that his wife had actually had a wife. He just thought he had the best of both worlds. And when I was sitting there talking to her, I was like, oh. <laughs> 
she was like, yeah, so, you know, we, you're probably the only person, you know, a few of our family know, but she said, nobody ever believes us when we tell people. He never found out. Never. And the baby, the baby should be 13 now. Uh, no, she should be 16 now. Yeah, she should be 16 now, and the other, the new baby should be 13. And they were my favorite clients, too. They were stupid cool. They were real nice. I'm just thinking about that. They were very nice. Like, they were real sweet. But you could tell that, like, the two women had matching tattoos. It was, they was, like, on their ring fingers. It was a lot. I ain't ask them questions. I just listen. I don't, I don't be asking all that stuff. I just be like, mm-hmm. The wife had already, the wife and the husband had a baby, and then the nanny got pregnant, which she really wasn't the nanny. She was the, the wife's wife. Yeah, they both had like, on their ring fingers, they both had like a little tattoo thing. Like, it was like a, I don't want to say a snake, but it was something wrapped around their finger. They both had the same little tattoo. They were so sweet. Mm -hmm. Like, I got, they would pay me for Christmas, Christmas Eve, New Year's, New Year's Eve. Um, I got paid for the whole week of my birthday. They were stupid sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People be having these real lives and they be thinking nobody. I don't know. When people be telling me their stories about their life, I just be like, hmm, okay. Like, um, wait a minute. Why I got y'all on here before? And, and I'm going to end with this one. I'm going to end with this one so I can have y'all in the chokehold. For the rest of the night, y'all will be in the chokehold. Wait a minute, where is that at? Hmm. Wait one second. I be trying to find let me see albums, that's it. Okay, I can oh thanks so much for calling me, I'll call you right back. Okay. Can y'all read that? Okay, so listen to this. My partner and I were separated since last April. I just returned the third week in January. I was being nosy and went through his things and found out he is on medication for HIV. I don't have the virus. How do I confront him? Because he hasn't told me yet. He keeps saying he is just sick. Honestly, I can't stand the sight of him now. Do I rat him out and tell his family and our children? How would you handle the situation? Those the emails I be getting. That's why I be telling people be living real. It be real life stuff going on with people. It be real life stuff happening with people. Real life stuff happening with people. She said, how do I tell my children? She want to tell her children that they daddy sick. But it happened when they were in a middle, they were separated when it happened. She said that it was, they were separated when it happened.
Not the life insurance policy. So I told her because you can't violate HIPAA law with uh, telling somebody else, you know, um, she don't tell me how old the kids are. She didn't put on there how old the kids were. I'm going to post it on my IG so y'all can read it. But she didn't post how old the kids were. Let me make sure I write her whole name out. Um, But she didn't post how old the kids were. I'm going to post the whole thing on, on my IG so y'all can read it. But she didn't post how old the kids were. She just said that they were on a break and he told. And she, no, no, she went looking through his things and found out that he was positive. She went through his stuff being nosy and she saw the medication. Yeah, the age of the kids, but I told her not to say anything to allow him to have the benefit to tell the kids instead of, yes, baby, when I tell you, if I would have saw that medicine, I would have been. The first thing that came to my mind, I would have to leave. Yeah. And I told, that's why I say don't say nothing, um, especially to his family. Allow him the benefit to tell the kids, but don't jump in and try to tell um, his family or, you know, be the first person to tell the kids. Allow him to tell the kids. Allow him to tell his family, all that stuff. He has to tell her, especially if they in any kind of relationship or anything. So, I posted the full email on IG so y'all can read the whole thing. Yeah, it's a lot. Oh, yeah, it's more. Things are getting more than physical because he going to be mad that you went. He His whole thing is you went through my stuff, not, you know, um, hey, baby. Not anything else. It's just going to be you went through my stuff. Oh, yeah. Back in the day when the doctors would leave uh, messages on people's voicemail. Who I never forget. Um, this girl I know um, had her mama leave a message on her boyfriend's voicemail saying that she was pregnant. <laughs> Saying it was the clinic calling. Because her mama used to work at the clinic in Memphis. Yeah, it's a lot. So, the reason why I said violating his hip a lot. Because you can't disclose anybody's um, medical um, information without their consent. So, unless... And she said she doesn't have the virus. So unless he passed it to her, then it'll be one of those, oh my God, this is what's going on. But I'm all for people telling their own story. I don't want to tell nobody else's story. I want you to be able to tell it. Oh, you right. He probably wouldn't have. If he ain't told her now, he probably ain't going to tell her. Yeah, it only applies to certain fields of stuff like that. But... I just, yeah, don't, 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 mm-mm. You got a whole wig. It's so much. Uh-oh. Ooh. They left a voicemail. That's how you found out somebody had HIV? 
See? Yeah, back in the day, they was leaving voicemails. Because you could opt in for a voicemail, and they would leave it on the, on the answering machine. Matter of fact, when they got back together, he should have been like, look, this is what's been going on. Blah, 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 blah. But he didn't. She probably, like, that's a good, that's a, see, I like, I like people who be little FBI agent. She said log into the pharmacy account to see how long he been taking the medicine. I would have never thought about that. That's an FBI agent. That's CIA right there, baby. That's who you call when you're trying to find somebody. Oh, yeah, he definitely knows she's going to leave. She's trying to leave and tell his family. See, all this jazz said, call, look in the farm. See, I ain't think about that. See, you're smart. you thinking big. I was thinking small. I'm just going to leave. That baby said, no, I need all the information. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. I need to. I'm trying to see how long I can go without coloring my hair. Woo. Okay, y'all, I got to get ready for the gym. I love y'all. I'm trying to be fine for summertime. My husband... I'm trying to actually get fine before my husband's birthday. Yeah, like now, uh, like even when I go to the doctor, I have to make an appointment with her for her to be able to read me any of my lab results. But, okay, y'all, let me get out of here. My husband's going to be calling me in a minute because we go work out together in the afternoons. All right, good people.